I'd like you to grab your Bibles and turn with me this morning to Galatians chapter 3. To Galatians chapter 3. And we'll be reading verse 10 through 14. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be any everyone who does not abide in all things written in the book of the law and do them. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law. For the righteous shall live by faith. But the law is not of faith, rather. The one who does them shall live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming sin for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised Spirit through faith. May the Lord bless the reading of His Word. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for these words that speak to us now again and remind us of who we are in you, Lord God. That remind us of how we are saved. That remind us how we are to live for you. We ask now, O oh God, that you open our eyes to see you, open our ears to hear from you, and give us the courage to put into practice what you teach us this morning. For these things we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, this morning we pick up where we left off from a couple Sundays ago um, on our theme of the law and verse faith. And uh, so last couple, two weeks ago, last Sunday, we looked at the Holy Spirit as it was Pentecost Sunday. And uh, so two Sundays ago, uh, we looked at two things on this passage. We actually looked at verse 1 through uh, verse 9. And here's the two points that we looked at with that. First was the supply of the Spirit by faith. It's the Holy Spirit that's supplied to us by faith when we come to faith in Jesus Christ. It's not by following the works of the law. And then the second point was that we're blessed by faith. Um, it's not that our faith itself is blessedness, but our faith, we're blessed by faith because our faith is placed in someone. Not, not, <laughs> I've heard some atheists sometimes say that, well, you have faith in faith. No, that does not make sense. You can't define faith, or you can't define a word by the same word. We hear that in our culture these days, that sometimes people will say something is something, um, there's a few different things that people say that. But in this case, too, you, you don't have faith in faith. Faith has to have an object placed upon it. And our faith is placed on Jesus Christ. So we're blessed by faith because of the one we have our faith in. And that, again, is Jesus Christ. This morning, we're going to look at... Oops. Got ahead of myself here. Hmm, I have the wrong PowerPoint this morning. Oops. Um, the third point that should be up there is righteous live by faith. The righteous live by faith. That's not Caleb's fault. That's my fault this morning. So I put in the, the tray the, the wrong file for this morning. Uh, again, I'll say it again one more time since it's not on the screen there. Righteous, the righteous live by faith. Verse 11 from a passage. Actually, let's read again from verse 10 first and verse 10 and 11. For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. Here's verse 11. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law. For the righteous shall live by faith. The Apostle Paul is writing and telling us here that it's, it's not by obeying the law that saves you. 
that's that's not where we place our faith in. And and there's some religions out there, and there's some even some churches in the Christian church that focus more on works than on faith. And some teach wrongly that it's your works that save you. They take the passage in in, Ma- in James that talks about uh, about doing works. But James isn't talking about doing works to be saved. He's talking about doing works because of our love for Christ, for what he has done for us. That one of the evidences of a Christian is that we will live by God's word. Now, do we live by that perfectly? No. (laughs) That's why we still need to rely on Jesus, why we need to rely on the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us still, because there are times where we still will fall short. But it's not the law that we fulfill that saves us. It's faith in Jesus Christ. Again, that's why Paul says that the righteous shall live by faith. So when we come into faith in Christ, Christ makes us righteous, and we live that way because Christ has made us righteous. Back to verse 10 again, it says here, For those who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law, and do them. Paul is reminding us here, don't go back to the old ways. You don't have to live by the law anywhere, because for one, you cannot live by the law. There's a curse by the law. And we need to understand and recognize the purpose of the law of God. Well, the purpose of the law is to show us that we can't live by the law. It's impossible for us to fulfill the law and thus be saved by it. And it should bring us to the point of recognition that we need to we need Jesus to save us from our sins. As again it says, the righteous shall live by faith. It's because it's our faith in Christ. It's Jesus who saves us. Again, verse 11 is pointing out that we're not justified by the law, but we're justified by Jesus. This verse actually even points to the Old Testament and in specifically Habakkuk 2.4, which illustrates about how the law cannot be fulfilled in our actions all the time because we will fall short. And then verse 12 speaks to us even further about this. But the law is not of faith. Rather, the one who does them shall live by them. It's interesting that Paul would point this out. In other words, if you're living by the law, you're not living by faith because you cannot have faith in the law. The law doesn't do anything for us. What it does is it tells us what is wrong, what is sin. It cannot save us. Then verse 13, it says here, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. By becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. I don't know about you, but I love these words of verse 13. How it reminds us too that Christ took upon Himself the sins of the world. That's the whole point of Him dying on the cross. He fulfilled the law that we cannot do on our own. He died in our place for our sins. Thus then fulfilling the debt of the law. That which we cannot do for ourselves, Christ did for us on the cross. And so Christ became a curse for us. And so we're no longer cursed by the law, but Jesus took that upon himself. Thus then, Jesus redeemed us from the law. Verse 14 then, So that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised Spirit through faith. Here Paul wraps up this thought here in telling us the end result. Showing that the promise that God gave Abraham, remember the promise God gave Abraham in Genesis? That through him all nations of the world would be blessed. That's this gift of salvation. And so we are blessed today because Jesus fulfilling this covenant with Abraham. 
and providing for us a way to be saved. Saved from our sins and a way to receive, and a way to receive the Holy Spirit so we can live our lives rightly for the Lord. Some might say, oh, but aren't we supposed to live like a Christian? Aren't we supposed to live by God's Word? Yes, but not as a means for salvation, but as a reflection of our love for God. Because Jesus does say elsewhere in, I believe it's in Matthew, He says that if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. What has God commanded us to do? Well, all of the law can be summed up in two, prom- two commands that Jesus gives us. And Jesus even says himself that all the law and the prophets are summed up in these two things. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. If we seek to obey, to love Jesus, to love God, then we'll do what God asks us to do. To live morally right. To do the things He asks us to do. To reach the lost. To disciple each other. When we do these things out of love for God, then we're fulfilling what Christ has done for us. We're loving Him. And showing that we're thankful for His gift of salvation. Thus showing then that we live by faith. Again, coming to faith in Jesus Christ and then living for Him and loving Him shows that we are righteous. Not because we're trying to fulfill the law, but because we want to love Jesus for what He's done for us. So this morning, the point of this whole passage of Galatians 1 through 14 is to show that we cannot be saved by the law. And that it's the exact opposite. It's coming to faith in Jesus and loving Jesus that makes us righteous. It's kind of like this. Paul Zal tells this story. He says, The duck hunter was with a friend in a wide open land of southeastern Georgia. Far away on the horizon, he noticed a cloud of smoke. Soon he could hear crackling as the wind shifted. He realized the terrible truth. A brush fire was advancing so fast that he couldn't outrun it. Rifling through his pockets, he soon found that he was looking for a book of matches. He lit a small fire around the two of them. Soon they were standing in a circle of blackened earth, waiting for the fire to come. Man, it sounds kind of scary, doesn't it? You can imagine standing and waiting for a fire to come around you. They didn't have to wait long. They covered their mouths with handkerchiefs and braced themselves. The fire came near and swept over them, but they were completely unhurt and untouched from the fire. The fire would not pass where fire already had passed. The law is like a brush fire. We cannot escape it. But if we stand in the burnt over place, not a hair of our head will be singed. Christ's death has disarmed it. Again, Jesus has supplied the Spirit as we have faith in Him. And we are blessed by faith in Jesus. And if we follow these words, then we, the righteous, will live by faith. Again, all this points to Jesus, points to God, who has done a wonderful work for us. I've heard, seen some people and heard some people sometimes say when I share the gospel, well, I'm not good enough to make it to heaven. If you feel that way, that you're not good enough to make it to heaven, you're right. Because no one is good enough to get to heaven. That is why Jesus' gift of salvation was required. 
I encourage you, brothers and sisters, don't try to earn your salvation anymore. But live by faith in Jesus Christ, knowing that you are saved because of His gift of salvation. And then love Him by doing what He asks of you to do. We can live righteous lives because of what Jesus has done for us. Now we just need to stop trying to be saved. Just live our lives to honor and be thankful for what He's done for us. Let's pray. Father God, we thank You for these words that You've spoken to us that remind us there's not anything that we do that saves us. It's what You have done for us. And we thank You so, Lord God, that You have paid the penalty for us. Thank You, Jesus, for Your sacrifice. And thank You that You rose on the third day to forgive us our sins. We pray, Lord Jesus, that, that You, Holy Spirit, remind us to live rightly for You, God, always. Because we love You. Because we're thankful for what You've done for us. Lord, as we saw in the words just a moment ago, how marvelous, how marvelous is our Savior's love for us. 